Welcome to Discovering. We're about halfway through the spring turkey season, and on tonight's show, we are in the turkey woods with a group from Heroes Harvest for the Sean Runkle Great Lakes Turkey Hunt. The nerves kicked in a little bit, but uh, Craig did a great job. Uh, shot himself a beautiful UP gobbler, and it was fun. It was a blast today. And we meet up with a local pack of Cub Scouts for a hike to the Peninsula Point Lighthouse. North, south, east or west, 471 is the best. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birds and pine and oak Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields Call of the timber wolf the loon's lonesome trill The eagle soaring high above the trout lies deep and still these are what I treasure The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan For the fourth year in a row, the Heroes Harvest nonprofit group held a turkey hunt for veterans the first weekend in May in Delta County. Heroes Harvest really was brought together and put together to help veterans to deal with PTSD, traumatic brain injury, and really our, our focus and our mission is to get get the veterans in the outdoors as a form of uh, outdoor recreational therapy. We've just got a, a great uh, opportunity for these veterans. We've got some, some great land to hunt from some of the local landowners that have, have donated their land for us to hunt. We're, uh, we've got a lodge that we stay at that also you know donates their, their lodge for us so we have a place to stay. And it's just a great resource here in the UP. Lots of turkeys, people willing to help out. Um, the amount of food and, and baked goods we get when, when they hear we're coming to town is, is just outstanding <laughs> and uh, almost, almost too much at times. And uh, it, it's just a, a, a great, great event and, and the feedback from the veterans is, is great. So we have nine vets in, in camp right now and there's probably 15 support staff with the, with the mentor hunters as, as well as just camp staff and extra mentors if need be and, and just even the local community. You know, we have people volunteer all the time. Hey, we've got turkeys over here. Do you mind if I come along and call for you? And we try to, try to keep it to one veteran per mentor hunter, you know, sometimes we'll have to do two, but this year we've just had so many people who are actually, we actually have guys on the bench waiting to, waiting to get pulled in to, to be a mentor. So um, it's really great having those volunteers come help. The only thing they have to do is get here. Um, we, we don't pay for travel costs. Uh, so most, most of the vets are from Michigan or Wisconsin. However, we have uh, uh, one veteran from Colorado and one veteran from uh, Pennsylvania. It's just a really an application process online, uh, you know, on heroesharvest.org. They sign up, we'll, we'll go through those applications and hopefully can accommodate and, and get them out here if they're willing to travel. But yeah, all, all costs are covered, food licensing, lodging, and, and everything in between. So the veterans come in Thursday and we'll, you know, welcome in and have dinner, get to know each other. And then on Friday, we, uh, we headed to uh, Gladstone to the trap range down there and we do a uh, firearm safety, low firearm safety. We sight in shotguns and make sure the patterns are, are good and, and that they're confident in their shooting. We do a little turkey talk, um, just turkey 101. And then uh, um, our director of medical actually uh, does a wilderness first aid. Um, class and it's it's super informative and it, it probably gets the highest reviews of, of everything we do on Friday. And we come back, have a big dinner, and it's usually bedtime because we uh, get up by uh, four o'clock in the morning. Like 
The hunting team I sat with this weekend is hunter and veteran Craig Purple and mentor Matt Meyer. This is Craig's first time turkey hunting. Gonna be excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> Still trying to wake up, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm Craig Purple. Um, I'm originally from Grand Marais. I live in Sioux St. Marino. I served in Fort Knox, Kentucky for basic and AIT and then uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. I was in for three years, U.S. Army. Okay. Yep, 3rd Squadron, 1st Cavalry Division. Matt Meyer, I'm from Random Lake, Wisconsin. So this is my first event that I've, I've uh, helped out at. Um, I told Peter when he first got involved that great cause, obviously uh, support our veterans, so important. Been turkey hunting for about 25 years, so uh, shot quite a few birds myself and helped others get involved in turkey hunting. And we were up early. Our alarms went off at 3.15 this morning. We had about a half hour drive into the spot here. Uh, our goal was we had some turkeys that were put to bed, meant we knew where they were roosting. We had set up a blind the day before uh, in a field that we had witnessed them strutting. So what our goal was to do is get them coming out of the roost into a strut field and you know make a nice shot for, for our guest. So I think we've heard the first gobbles about quarter to six, and those were what I call a shock gobble. Actually, some sandhill cranes started to wake up and made noise, and the, the toms responded to them. But the hens started making noise right around six. Legal shooting is 6.05. Uh, I think about 6.15, they were on the ground and, and making their move. We had turkeys coming out of the roost, uh, probably about 50, 60 yards out and uh, Matt got them talking and it looked like they were gonna come come our way, but it was like a 50-50 thing and it, they decided to go left instead of right. But it got noisy and uh, it's my first time doing it, so it was pretty exciting. I had my heart going. I was hoping the camera picked up the sound. We were also right next to a creek, so you can hear that as well. I've never been around a bunch of hens that were that boisterous. I mean, they were, talking back and forth. They're obviously figuring out their packing order too, but at one point I thought maybe another hunter had snuck in and was doing some calling because it was loud and a lot of it. It was really cool to hear. Just the way the woods wakes up, uh, experiencing everything that most people that sit on a couch don't get to see or hear. To share that with somebody that's never done it, it's just, to me, it's awesome. I mean, I get excited still and I've been doing it for 25 years. Just just listening to that this morning, and I could see a tom up on the ridge, all fanned out, and it's just amazing. Craig could see a tom to our right on the road, but it was out of view for Matt and I. Later in the morning, we did get a show of two sandhill cranes fighting. Even though Craig did not bag his first gobbler that morning, just being in the woods and listening to it wake up was worth getting up early. The interesting part is though, the landowner came out and met us after our hunt, which was really cool. Again, without the landowners, we can't do this. So big shout out to them. But he had taken a video, the, the birds had kind of snuck around behind us and we're hunting on one side of a river creek and they were behind us strutting. They were hearing our calls, gobbling and, it's just uh, turkey hunting, really. You don't know what's gonna happen. It's just an adrenaline rush and I, I'm addicted already. <laughs> I haven't even shot one, but it's the first time turkey hunting where I haven't shot a turkey. <laughs> Back at the Ensign Fire Department, we ran into one successful hunter that first morning. We uh, set up, the birds came down out of the trees, but we never saw them. They took off in a different direction. Uh, a fine little while later, we got up. We re-set up in a different position, a pinch point between two, two, between two swamps. And we tried calling because they had heard the bird there other days around 10 o'clock. And nothing happened. 10.30, we're standing there talking about coming back here to get some coffee. And I turned around and looked over my shoulder and here he was on top of the hill coming down. So we quick dive back into the makeshift blind we had and a hen came down with him. He followed the hen down and I was able to get a 30 yard shot with a 410.
I decided to stick around for one more morning hunt with Craig and Matt, and I'm glad I did. It was so awesome. It was incredible. Matt, Matt brought them in perfect. We, we hunted about 50 yards from where we were yesterday. Matt came up with a plan of kind of ambushing them after they came off the roost, and it worked perfect. I saw him kind of kind of off to our right about two o'clock when he was up on the ridge and he kind of dropped down but I thought he was coming off to my left a little bit and Matt was sitting on the left side of me and he saw him and I'm looking he said he's coming he's coming and I'm looking um, and all of a sudden he just popped out of nowhere Shoot. Believe it. That's a big bird, dude. That's a big bird. <laughs> I wasn't perfect because I actually choked a little bit, forgot to take it off safe, and Matt's telling me, shoot him, shoot him, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> so I choked a little, but it worked out. He uh, dropped him right there, that tungsten shot. Man, it, it did a heck of a job, but I can't thank Matt enough. He did an incredible job. Heroes Harvest, thank you very much for, for having me. It, it, it's incredible. I'm hooked on turkey hunting now. Thank you, Ron, for letting us hunt his property. Um, there's just so many generous people around here that donate land and a lot of home-cooked meals and Ensign Fire Department put on a nice dinner for us. Uh, it's just an incredible experience, and I'm, I'm hooked on turkey hunting now. I really am. <laughs> I haven't been that excited in a long time. I was just thrilled, my first time turkey hunting, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped. I just had to ask Craig about his face mask. So my face mask, I'm, I'm guessing about 18 years ago, my wife and I, Heather, we were garage sailing and <clears throat> I saw in a free box, I saw this baby. And I picked it up and showed her and she, it was, I can't remember exactly, but it was a no. It was a solid no. So then I had to keep it, and I wore it every year deer hunting. I kind of feel like Nacho Libre when I wear this. <laughs> but I think it brings me good luck. <laughs> I get lots of comments about it. <laughs> I was gonna not, I was gonna stop wearing it, but I can't now. Thanks, Craig, for letting me sit with you guys, and it was a joy to watch you harvest your first turkey here in the UP. While I was out filming that second morning of the Heroes Harvest turkey hunt, my buddy Everett Miles shot his very first turkey as well. I'd been following Everett, his dad, and some of their friends for the past couple of years, trying to get Everett his first gobbler. We hunted many days in many spots and came close last year when the three of us crammed into my deer blind. Everett's dad sent me these videos he took of their hunt. Congratulations Everett on your very first turkey. That's a beautiful bird. And Everett beat me to bagging a bird this year. Last Thursday, I finally got my first gobbler, and I'll have that story on a future episode. While I was in Delta County for the Veterans Turkey Hunt, I also met up with a local pack of Cub Scouts for a hike to the Peninsula Point Lighthouse on the Stonington Peninsula. Weebelows, which is the fourth graders, are completing their Weebelow walkabout, which is the last adventure, adventure that they need to complete to earn their Weebelow rank. It's a three mile hike, and then we're incorporating a dinner along the hike, and then just whatever other little things that pop up, you know, water filtration or making tools out of the stones and pretty much just being a classroom outdoors. Wild edibles or do we want to look for animal traps? Wild edibles. Wild edibles. Animal right. trails. Animal trails. So a uh, Weebelow is the fourth graders. Even if there's one, it's Weebelows with an S. We be loyal scouts. In the Cub Scout program, it's kindergarten through fifth grade. 
Kindergarten is lions, and then it goes up each grade level. So lions, tigers. What are you? A lion. A lion. No, a tiger. Tiger. Wolves, bears, weeblos, and AOL. So AOL is our arrow of light, which is the fifth graders. Once they hit fifth grade and they complete their AOL rank, then they move on to the troop side, which is sixth grade through 18 years of age. I'm Abigail, and I'm a Weeblo in fourth grade. And I'm Serenity, and I'm also a Weeblo in fourth grade. Today we are, we are hiking Peninsula Point, and we are having pasties for lunch. We are just having a great time in the outdoors. My name is Cameron, and I'm in third grade. My name's Warren, and I'm first grade. What are we doing here today? Um, honestly, we were going on a hike, and the Weebos planned it so then they can get something. I don't know what it was. But then our Cub Scout leader, Mr. Gary, said that the bears could take along. We gave them options. Um, here, up by Rapid River, up at Camp Hiawatha, which is the, Cubs, or the scout camp, mm -hmm. and then gave them maps to look at, and they started mapping out and figuring out where they wanted to go. They then talked about the meals, um, what type of meals did they want. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you make it? You have to go get stuff. Adults picked a few places and we voted on it, and then we made a list of all the essentials we're gonna need and the lunch we're gonna do. These kids learn their Cub Scout six essentials for hiking before hitting the trail. It's a whistle, first aid, water, flashlight, sun protection, trail snack, and leave no trace principles. Leave no trace is like, um, you only leave your footprints, and but you take, don't take anything. Besides memories and photos. Yeah. Um, that also includes not harming nature unless it's bothering you. So say there's just a chipmunk off to the side, don't try to scare it into the trees, it's not doing any harm. Don't like carve into living things, don't pick flowers or leaves off trees. Don't put litter and take garbage that's even not yours. Leave it better than you found it. I think a lot of adults could learn from these kids. But most importantly, they're learning to enjoy nature, bugs and all. I love being outdoors and I just love being yeah. around nature. Yeah, and when I wasn't at Cub Scout, I didn't get to go camping that much. But now that I am, I get to go camping a little bit and we're about to go to summer camp this summer. Yep. We go camping two to three times every year. Really big on the hiking and camping. So we give them a full calendar, full calendar of things, you know, summer camp, overnight camp, day camps. You know, the crawfish boil, swimming, a bike rodeo. Why do you like being a scout? Because you get to adventure to new places and explore. And you get to do a lot of fun stuff. From east to west, there are Cub Scout programs throughout the Upper Peninsula. There's just under 600 kids total throughout the UP involved in the scouting program from the Cubs to the troop level, venturing and crews. So from kindergarten through 18 years of age, there's just under 600. We go by Gladstone Pack because we're based out of Gladstone, but we cover the Gladstone, Rapid River, and Mid Penn School Districts right now. So there's no real limit on the borders. It's find what fits for you, find what fits your schedule. Each unit meets on a different day of the week. And these scout programs are not successful without the volunteerism of scout leaders like Mr. Gary and the kids' parents. Water break! Water break again? All right. It's so worth it for the kids. I mean, it's so much, so many old traditions are dying off. They're not carrying and being passed down. So if we can, if we can get something to stick with any of them, we're grateful for it. You know, doesn't matter what it is. It's, you know, kid A might, pick up the fishing and kid be with the trapping and C and D, you know, fall in love with the hiking. Or, so it's, as long as we can give them a good taste of everything and let them kind of pick and choose their paths as they grow, it's a big thing. North, South, East or West, 471 is the best.
That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.